sipping that tea because some things are going to be said. I want to discuss a little bit about some governance issues in Jamaica. And this live this evening has to deal with something that I saw today, which was very disturbing, which had my name associated with it. And I said to all of you early, well, certainly last year, that normally I would keep quiet about things and just say, well, boy, make it pass, that, that Lisa no longer exists. Good evening. Let's wait on <clears throat> sipping that tea because some things are going to be said. Have you bought your NFT? <laughs> Looking into it? Developing some? Trying to? Good night, Annie. Yeah, man. Florida. How is everybody this evening? It was raining a lot earlier and certainly yesterday in St. Anne, more down by the coast. There was a lot of rain oh, and Port Murray and you can see the videos. So I hope everybody is dry and fine and, and doing well. So this evening, I, um, I believe in being early and I, I want to thank all of you for tuning into this live this evening. Can you all hear me or do I need to turn up the microphone a little bit? Let's do this, shall we? Yes. Can you hear me a little bit better? Is everybody, um, you go ahead waiting patiently while you sip the tea, yes? Florida here too, okay. I want to discuss a little bit about some governance issues in Jamaica. And this live this evening has to deal with something that I saw today, which was very disturbing, which had my name associated with it. And I said to all of you early, well, certainly last year, that normally I would keep quiet about things and just say, well, boy, make it pass. That, that Lisa no longer exists. Because over the years, and I've represented my constituency now going into my fourth term, and just for a peaceful life, I say, you know, let things stay. I don't want to make a fuss about it. But sometimes you have to come forward and tell and be transparent and certainly tell the truth, especially when there may be an agenda to give wrong information or not the entire picture. So let's go back to May of last year, May 2021. Now, if most of you remember leading up to me, there was a significant rise in attacks on women in Jamaica. And it's, it's Jamaica has the highest rate of femicide in the world, the second highest rate of femicide in the world. That's, that's people murdering women. And there were a lot of rapes. You remember Candace Johnson, that just a number of things that were happening that were making women in particular feel afraid. So I go back to May, 2021. 
when a number of students, the women, um, the female students, came to me from the Monique College. Now, for those of you who know Monique, um, when you come off the highway or you come down Mount Ross and you're coming to the, 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 the town of Monique where the four-way crossing is, you can go straight to Walker's Wood, right? Or you can make the left to go to Claremont. If you make the left to go to Claremont, Money College, there's a turn with a lot of heavy foliage, there's no street lights, and there's a lot of bush. There's actually a tire shop almost opposite to it. So those of you who are here, you know what I'm talking about. If you look on that side, you see some steps coming all the way from the college down to the main road. It is those steps that the students use at all hours of the night, especially our women and our men, to come down those steps and many of the, sometimes it's very, very dark. There's no lighting, there's a lot of bush. And it's all, it was also a hideout point for criminals. So last May, there was an alleged abduction and persons of a student and persons got very jumpy. I spoke to the principal, Mr. Isaacs, who has been very supportive. And I spoke to a number of the persons there. As a matter of fact, let me just tell you who I spoke to because this is important. So I went and I met with Jacqueline Thames, the Vice Principal of Administration and Student Services, Mr. Leroy Harvey, the Vice Principal of Academics. I met with Howard McCallough, a lecturer. I met with Andrew Mullings, the Procurement Officer. I met with Ainsworth Lawrence, the Plant and Facilities Manager. And I met with Nikoi Bent, the Guild President. If you go back on my Instagram, you can see the post and we talk about what we're doing. Now, in that meeting, we needed to establish a proper transport facility for students, for staff, and for other residents, even across, because the Monique scheme is across there, so that they wouldn't have to walk all the way down to the crossing. When we looked at it, we would have to, because of the corner, we'd have to excavate into the, 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 um, the, the wall, in, into the existing infrastructure, and to take that out and build a massive retaining wall to be able to put the street lights, which I wrote the, the Minister of Local Government and he gave his approval for four street lights. And all of this information I will put in my, in, in my stories after. Um, he gave the approval for the street lights. We started to bush the area. And then the NWA came, the National Works Agency, to look at the facility, to look at the space. The difference is though, the NWA cannot build buildings. They're in charge of roads and works. So we called in the parish council and I wanted to listen very, very carefully. I called the parish council and I said, look, please, we need to build a proper transport facility where we have a lay-by that the taxis can pull into, that the students can stand comfortably, that is well lit, and that it is, it is a situation that is covered. So when I see something going around, and I, let me get to that after, I said I will take, the college did not have the money to do it because by the time the parish council did the technical estimates after they visited the site, it was going to cost of millions of dollars because you have to excavate the area and those of you who understand the situation to build a lay-by which is long enough for the taxis to come around the corner to pull in and to wait is not a cheap event. Um, I said I would take the money, my allocation for my CDF. Now, the CDF, MPs don't do technical analysis. MPs don't give out funds. MPs don't receive funds. There's an allocation of $20 million that every member of parliament gets. And it is the CDF office at Jamaica House with a competent technical staff that guides you how to write proper infrastructural projects to ensure that when it gets to the parliament, which is a CDF committee has to ratify all of the programs, that it is well on target and on track. So you can't come with a like a dibby dibby project without the right narrative, who it's going to benefit, the right um, proposals in it, how many residents will benefit, why you're doing it, etc. And also, you cannot do a project without the agencies, 
and the technical agencies approving the estimates. So Lisa Hanna don't the estimates for, for building expenditure, road, nothing. It is the Department of Roads and Works and the Center and Municipal Corporation who is one of the agencies that the CDF has an MOU with to implement and manage projects. Okay. So now they came, they visited, they met with the staff of Monique, established what needed to happen, how big the wall, the retaining wall needs to be, how long the lay-by needs to be, etc. etc. That entire project to do a proper transportation stand to protect the safety and livelihood of students and staff and the residents of my constituency came to 3.9 million. It's not a bush shed with two pieces of zinc and two plywood we're talking about. No, we're doing a proper retaining wall, we're doing a lay-by and a proper coverage that when students stand up there, there are four street lights and that people can drive by and it is well lit and it does not hide criminals. And it can't drag in a girl or in a boy and say they're going to rape them. Let us just get very specific with this. The CDF, to their credit, and I want to big up Miss Kadisha Campbell at this point, and I want to say a very special thank you to Mrs. Pauline Scott Blair and the CDF parish officer, Mr. Lawson. Why? Because they jump hoops to make sure that members of parliament get their projects right before they take it and sit before the parliamentary committee of the parliament. So I just can't hand them a project and expect them to do it. It goes through many, many different versions, many iterations, many different corrections. And that parish council had to do that estimate several different times to make sure it conformed within the government protocols and guidelines of the project so that when that allocation came out of my CDF funds, that it was a right and proper thing to do. So imagine my shock and shock today when I see a headline that says, Jaws come to a halt, 2.6 million for a bus shed. And imagine my shock as well because of the negligence of the chairman of the CDF committee who did not take the time to look through the entire document and proposal to identify that if there is a lay-by that has to be built, the budget covers that, there is a retaining wall, a massive retaining wall, and all of the items of expenditure are in that proposal. Now, I know that when persons see a headline, they jump to conclusions. And I also know that many times persons love to blame politicians that all they do is take people's taxpayers' money and don't have an idea how they want to spend it. That 2.6 million is a first phase. And if as the constituency MP, when, when the Money College, which is a premier institution in an area that has been synonymous with learning, teaching, good people, say I'm going to use your taxpayers' dollars to ensure the safety and security of the residents, the students, and to give our taxi drivers an opportunity and public transportation and other cars, the ability to drive safely. I think that is a development project because it lasts forever. I'm not taking the money to give to only welfare because I'm sure if a $2 million project came up to, to just do welfare and poverty alleviation without the requisite things, it may have been stamped. But for some reason, it appears that it is easy to blame the agencies. And I really want to thank the government-led parish council, who is chaired by a JLP councillor, Mr. Sidney Stewart, who has ensured that every check and balance went into making this project approved and up to, up to the right procurement guidelines of the government of Jamaica. So Lisa Hannah can't get up and decide, so boy, she just want to write a project for 2.6 million. No, I don't have the technical um, expertise in construction. 
I also don't have the technical expertise or the permission under the government guidelines to do that. All I can do is recommend, make the necessary um, proposals under that scheme and say, look, please call in the relevant agencies to tell us how much it is going to cost. Not only was that project approved because it's only the first phase and the project is gonna get done and I commit to the constituency that that project is going to get done and you will have when you bust that corner for Goa Claremont and head up roadside or to even turn to go to the college, you will have good lighting, right? Because Mr. McKenzie has given me the approval for the four street lights to go in that transportation stand. But also the other project was, was, was approved for the taxi drivers further down by the crossing to use the old PWD building for $5 million. And that project is going to be a split project between the CDF and the monies that I have with JBI because the taxi driver for them was being charged by the police because they had nowhere to park. So there are two facilities, transport facilities, that is being built shortly and they were approved. So I want to say to persons, don't run with a headline because that story, if you read it, you would have gone all the way to the bottom and you would have seen where the head of CDF answered the chairman, member of parliament, Juliet Holness, and said to Mrs. Holness, um, chair, the, I cannot override the technical competence of the St. Anne Municipal Corporation. And if you look through the document, you will see that that budget is going to build a retaining wall and other things that are imperative to ensure that when we excavate the side of the, 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 the mountain, because basically that is what it is. So it's not a $2.6 million for a bus shed with two pieces of ply and two pieces of zinc. No, I don't treat my constituents that way. That's not what's gonna be built. You are going to have a facility that students can respect and have dignity. And so when rain fall or when it is dark, there is no fear or contradiction for them to be standing up there. So I want to, I want you to do that. And 2.6 million dollars to build a lay-by, a retaining wall, uh, a proper shelter is 16,000 US dollar. 16,000 US dollars is what it works out to. Now we live in Jamaica, yes. Now most of you would have been following the things that I've been saying to know say cement Ghana. Everything Ghana, except your salary. Right? So let us let us understand um, that that is what is happening. And the project has been approved. It hasn't started. The Centre Municipal Corporation will be managing the project, not me, right? They're the implementing agency. They have to now go out and find the people to do the work, the contractor to do the work, and they have to pay accordingly. So when I put up this budget, and I'm not putting up the Centre and Parish Council budget, I'm going to make sure that they're respected that way. But if they had looked through the document, they would have seen this, right? And that is what I'll put up, which is from the, the thing. So they would have seen, um, for example, provide material and labor to cut 12 inch millimeter diameter steel bars to fabricate and erect wall bars and steel caging for steel matting and columns for retaining wall. It need 980 of those, $313,000. Supply material and labor to cut nine millimeter diameter steel bars, fabricate and erect stirrups for retaining wall. You need, 300, um, you need 264 of that, $84,000. To prepare and mix one, three, six concrete pour and settle to form foundation footing for retaining wall. And you need, um, that is $304,000. To supply materials and labor to prepare and mix the one to two mortar and lay 200 millimeter blocks and fill pockets as directed for retaining wall, $117,000. And it's sort of thing go down, right? So everybody can look and see, and there's an agency fee because the parish council charges an agency fee, which is 5%, and there is a contingency fee of 5%, that is 119324 and another 119. So by the time you add up all of that, it comes to that. No, all of you, when I put up this, you know, if you're in construction or whatever, 
If you feel this budget is not prepared appropriately by the St. Anne Municipal Corporation, then you say that. But don't call the member of parliament's name or the constituency because she doesn't have responsibility for preparing this budget. And I certainly don't interfere in the Department of Roads and Works. And even when this budget is prepared, the superintendent of Roads and Works, Mr. Ricketts, of the St. Anne Municipal Corporation has to approve it. Not Lisa Hanna, not anybody in my office, not no councillor, no, they have to approve it, not me. So that is where we are, right? And if the safety and happiness and peace of mind of the people I was elected to serve is not the most important thing for development, then I don't know what is, right? And I think when we are expressing our views, we have to remember the rules and we have to give all of the information. We shouldn't be alarmist. If we're going to call somebody's name, especially in the media, let us have the facts correct. Let us make sure that when we do it, it can stand up to scrutiny. Because if the chairman had just taken the time to look at the issues, at the attending things, at the details of the proposal and the budget, as pointed out by Ms. Campbell from the CDF, she would have seen what that budget was for. That it wasn't for a bus shed, but it was for a proper shelter lay-by and retaining wall. And it was even costing more. This is the first phase. And I'm happy and I'm proud to be able to do this for the students of money and that college because it has done so much for Jamaica. It has given Jamaica so many sterling performers in academia as teachers. So many people who have gone across the world to represent St. Anne. And it is our beacon in Southeast St. Anne for higher learning. And so I want to congratulate Mr. Isaacs and the chair and the board and the teachers for doing this and for making me be a part of this because this is what true development is about. And this is what I believe the Constituency Development Fund was to do, to ensure that there are proper activities to make Jamaicans feel better about the quality of their life. So yes, there are two transportation facilities that are going to be built in Monique. And so I hope that that sheds a little bit more light on the matter. And I hope journalists who decided to just run with something without actually looking at the project document, also understand that they have a duty as well to ensure that for the residents and for posterity, that the truth is carried. Okay, so that is that. Um, thanks for tuning in. I will be sharing this on my page. So you can always go back and look at it. I love you all. Thank you so much. And be safe, whatever you do. Blessings. <laughs>